Uh-huh. Yeah. I know. Okay. Send him in. Okay, now, now, Chief, before we start, I, I just need to say that I, I just couldn't let those wheels go. What did I tell you, Chase? Look, Chief, there was just too much left to cover. I, I, I needed more time. What did I tell you, Chase? You, you told me not to go near those, those I told cheap... you not to revisit the cheap Chinese column by the wheels case, but you went ahead and worked the goddamn case. But Chief, there was just too much left to cover, okay? The, the people needed to know how good those wheels were. Listen to me, Trace. If it was up to me, I'd be taking your badge right now. But you're lucky. City Hall, like the report, the mayor bought these same goddamn wheels for Sunsburn. I had you lined up for the Sensa Empire group set case. But since you disobeyed a direct order, that case is going to your partner, Jenkins. But Chief, Jenkins doesn't even know that group set. He's a damn fine cop. And you could learn a thing or two from that. You'll be working pedals for the next six months. Chief, pedals, really? Who who the hell cares about pedals? Very few people. It's it's quite a niche topic with without a very broad audience. I honestly don't expect it to do very well. But that's the whole point. Chief, I am not working pedals. Well then hand over your badge. That's what I thought. Now get the hell out of my office. too hard on the kid. But he's gotta learn. Francine, give me the commission. I've got Trace working pedals, but not for long. He's a loose cannon. But he's the best damn cop this city's ever seen. And welcome back to another extra ordinarily average Trace Fellow production. My name, as always, is Luke. So, I've covered a couple of little ways that you can drop some weight from your bike on this channel previously. I've covered carbon wheels, carbon saddle, carbon handlebars, carbon bottle cages, titanium quick release skewers, and lightweight aluminium crank sets. Well, Ladies and gentlemen, hold onto your cleats as the journey down this cheap Chinese rabbit hole continues. So as you may have surmised from the title of this video, today we're gonna to be checking out a couple of different pedals and I'm gonna see if I can save you some, uh, yeah, some, some weight and some money as well. So let's begin with a set of pedals that I suspect most of you out there are already familiar with. So these are my trusty pair of Shimano PD-5700-105 SPD-SL road pedals. Quite a mouthful. Cheeky. But super common and kind of my baseline for a decent clipless pedal. They look pretty beaten up, but I must have ridden this particular pair for at least 15 or 16,000 miles or around 25,000 kilometers. Aluminium construction with a plastic clip for retention at the back. Crazy robust, super easy to use and service cracking. A new pair will set you back uh, around 50 quid or 60 bucks and come in at 325 grams on the scales. Very similar to the basic Shimano PD-R540 pedals, the kind of latest revision of these, that come in at 330 grams if you're familiar with those ones. But weight-wise, we can definitely do better. Right then, these are the XU Star 
E-PR200 EPS-R pedals. These names are not getting any easier to pronounce, but a really cracking set of pedals. So with these, I made the switch over to Look Keo from Shimano Cleats. Not for any particular reason really, just the fact that these pedals looked really decent and came with the cleats too. So I just swapped them over on my shoes and gave them a go. Just as an FYI, if your shoes fit Shimano cleats, they'll fit Look Keo and vice versa. They have a chromoly spindle and some decent bearings, but the pedals themselves are an all plastic construction, which I'm sure raises a few eyebrows, but I'll get to that later. And I've ridden them for around 3000 miles or about 4,800 kilometers. Super easy to clip into actually. I basically never miss with these and clip in pretty much first time, every time. Honestly, a real pleasure to use these pedals, especially on the commute as I'm clipping in and out a fair few times. Cost wise, a little bit cheaper than the Shimano pair as I got mine for about 44 pounds, I think. But weight wise, they come in at 244 grams for the pair. So a nice little 81 gram saving over the, uh, yeah, over the Shimano pedals. But what if you wanna save weight and a little bit more cash? Right, last up, we have a nice cheap little pair that I picked up on the ever delicious AliExpress. And here they are, the Expedo Thrust 7s. Need to be a bit careful pronouncing that name. A set of cast magnesium pedals, which is cool. Look Keo specific again. And they have these kind of tribal decals on the front. Pretty, pretty badass. So these puppies cost me 25 quid or just over 30 buckaroos. And that also includes two pairs of grip cleats too. The black ones, at zero degrees float and the red are, are six degrees. So pretty flipping cheap overall. And the weight is 237 grams for the pair. So the lightest of the three. I've ridden these about 300 miles so far or nearly 500K. They clip in and out nicely and, and ride pretty smooth too. Now I really wanted to like these. In person and on paper, they look pretty decent. Chrome Ollie spindle, cast magnesium construction, lightweight, Really great price, but I have a few issues with them. Number one, after a few hundred miles, they started creaking. Okay, so I've literally just got in off a, off a ride. Um, so bear with, I didn't have time to set up the lights or anything, and I've still got my cycle gloves on. Um, this pedal started squeaking, so let me see if you can hear this. Oh, it's pretty bad. So I greased up the nut that fits into the actual crank arm here, but I never put any grease on the pedal. And I presume that there was nothing put on from the factory. Now I've since fixed this with a little bit of oil, but still no factory lubrication around the retention clip. Not a great sign of quality. Number two, the really thick grease around the bearings means the pedals kind of stick in place when you clip out. They don't come to rest in a downward position and that can make clipping in in a hurry a bit hit and miss. This will probably get better over time, but right now, this is a bit frustrating. And number three, I'm slightly concerned with the tension adjustment screw at the back here. And as my Nan says, I'll tell you for why. Because this clear plastic piece doesn't retain the screw properly and seems to be quite cheaply made. And now we're gonna talk about plastics. Okay, so this might not sound like the sexiest topic, but bear with me because I guarantee this is something you will notice from now on. Okay, so this is a regular plastic cleat and this is a plastic cleat that's been reinforced with glass fiber. Now glass fiber reinforced plastics are a lot stronger and more durable than their regular plastic counterparts, but they are a bit more expensive. Not only are the materials to produce them a little bit more expensive, but because the product itself is more durable, the molds that these uh, parts come out of tend to wear out a lot quicker with glass fiber reinforced plastics. And that also increases production cost. Okay, so how do you tell the difference between these two plastics? Well, visually it's very difficult, although the plastics with glass fiber reinforcing in them tend to be slightly duller 
in, in color. I'm not sure if you, can, if you can see that. But a very easy way to tell is by cutting into the plastic very slightly. You don't need to cut into it much. You can basically feel the glass fibers as, as you cut through it and you can kind of hear it as well. It almost sounds a little bit crunchy. Whereas on the regular plastic, you won't feel anything. It'll just be completely smooth as you cut through it. Okay, so I tried to capture what it sounds like, but as you can see, I basically had to attach my mic onto the cleat. Anyway, have a quick listen. So you should be able to hear the slight crunchiness and that is the telltale sign of glass fiber reinforcing. So products that use glass fiber reinforced plastic in their, in their construction demonstrate to me that the manufacturer has put some proper thought and some additional cost into producing a decent product. So for example, the plastic retention clip on the back of the Shimano pedal here, that's glass fiber reinforced plastic, which accounts for why such a high wear area is still completely fine and functional after tens of thousands of miles. The entire construction of the XUStar pedal here is glass fiber reinforced plastic. Now you can see some of the paint has worn off, but apart from that, there's barely any wear on this pedal at all really. And after kind of what, three to 4,000 miles consistently using these, I think that just goes to show how durable this plastic is. Now, the Xpedo pedals. I've got them here on my bike and I've had them on my bike for, for a little while now. The body itself is made from magnesium, all fine and dandy. I'm sure that will wear absolutely fine. But the parts on these pedals that are plastic are just plastic. This includes both of the cleats that came supplied uh, with the pedals. No glass fiber reinforcing to be found here. Now, it is worth stating that these Xpedo pedals, they have actually been fine. I mean, I've had no major issues with them, but just the overall design, the choice of plastics, and a couple of the other things that I've mentioned, it doesn't kind of inspire masses of confidence in this product. I mean, I guess for 25 quid, they had to cut costs somewhere. But all this being said, I am gonna give these pedals a fair shot. So I'll be keeping them on my bike from now on and I will keep you posted on how they wear and how they perform over, over time. So, what have we learned today? Couple things. Number one, pedals are a decent route to dropping some of the weight from your bike. They're not gonna be quite as fruitful as some of the other components that I've showcased on this channel, but if you are looking to drop those few extra grams pedals, are definitely worth looking into. Numero dos. Pay attention to, to plastics. I think most people tend to assume that plastics equals bad, but this ultimately depends on, on the product and the composition of the plastics that are used. I mean, these XU Star pedals here, these are completely plastic as I've, uh, yeah, as I've mentioned, but they're frankly amazing and are probably the best pedals I've ever used, actually. Number three, or should I say num number three, if I'm in, in Inglorious Bastards. Um, these pedals, the jury is still out uh, for me on these AliExpress pedals. Yes, they're cheap, lightweight, and they, they ride okay, I guess, but just aspects of the design lead me to believe they're not particularly great quality. But like I said, I'm gonna leave them on my bike so time will tell. Maybe they'll break and I'll end up underneath a London bus. All aboard the fourth by break. Also, as an aside, after solely riding Shimano SPD SL pedals for close to 10 years, maybe, maybe a bit more, and then making the switch to look Keo, I couldn't really tell the difference between the two of them, to be honest with you. So if you are riding Shimano and you like the look of some Look Kio pedals, I wouldn't worry about switching switching over. They are exactly the same. Anyway, that is it for this video. Um, as always, links for all of this jazz 
that I've shown in the video today down there in the video description below. So subscribe if you uh, yeah if you like this kind of stuff. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. And if you've got any questions or any comments about any of the pedals that I've demonstrated in this video or about pedals in general, throw them down below and I'll try to get back to as many of you as I can. Anyway, I will see you guys in the next video. <clears throat> well then hand over your badge. Oh, I haven't got my glasses on. Jesus, I can't see a goddamn thing.